Hey Canucks fans, welcome to another edition of Ask Me Anything. I'm Canuck Clay, I'm the founder of the GLCPC, the Good Looking Canucks Positivity Club. This is my Canucks take, all in one take. It's Clay's Canucks commentary for Monday, October the 18th. If you're new, this is what you should do. Hit the subscribe button now for daily Canucks insight that's positive, timely, and trustworthy. And as always, this vlog is brought to you by Perform Transform, personal training, and weight loss. Sign up for a free seven day trial using the link in my video descriptions down below. I usually do these Ask Me Anythings on Sunday, but because of the 24 hour live stream that was on Friday, Saturday, I bumped this to Monday. It's also a, not a Canucks game day. They actually have two days between their game. They played on Saturday in Detroit. Then they were off yesterday. They're, well, no game yesterday, no game today, and they play in Buffalo tomorrow. So I can preview that game tomorrow. I want to say thanks to everyone who joined me for my live stream last night. Pretty exciting. Also drew uh, the winners of the Canucks tickets from my 24-hour live stream. So all in all, it was a really good stream. And congratulations to Angus Mack, who won those tickets. I will find you sometime this week. So we have a few questions to go to for this week's Ask Me Anything. And let's get started. Lucas Gates says this. Do you think the Canucks have a good chance of going all the way within 5 to 10 years? Depends uh, how you define good chance, Lucas. I think the Canucks will have as good a chance as any in the next two to four years as opposed to five to ten. Five to ten, it's so hard to project out. We don't know if Pedersen's still going to be here. We uh, Hughes' will, his contract ends after six years. We don't know what Miller and Horvat are going to be like. So you could argue that their window is now in the next two to four years. PD will still be under contract. Hughes will still be under contract likely Horvat and Besser, not sure about Miller, Demko as well. So I'd say the window is two to four years as opposed to five to 10 years. Um, that's that's kind of like my gut feeling. Petter Hughes asks, when Sutter comes back, do you think he'll get his A back or will Miller and OEL be the permanent alternate captains? I think they will add Sutter to that mix and then you'll have four. You'll have Horvat and then you can have Sutter, Miller and OEL. Yes, it's not the usual two forwards, two defensemen. It's three forwards and one D, but I think it's fine. Just like a, in a football, a quarterback shouldn't really lose his um, starting position due to injury. Maybe you don't lose your associate captaincy or alternate captaincy, I should say, due to injury, i.e. COVID as well. So I could see it go either way, but I would be fine if Sutter retains an alternate captain position along with Miller and OEL. But, I, uh, you know, it's funny that it is Miller and OEL. Those are the two guys that I have been predicting uh, for the past few months. So no problem if Sutter's added to that group. No problem if Sutter's not added to that group. But uh, I think it's fine. It's not like uh, you can't have one more. So I, I would give it to him out of respect. And the fact that he is a good leader after all. Chris Seifert says, Do you feel OEL will have a bounce back season? Now with an A on his shoulder, he will be playing a vital role as one of the leaders in the Canucks group. You are taking OEL so far and what you see him for points this season. Yeah, I predicted 45 points for Oliver ekman Larson. I talked about that on my 24-hour live stream. He's always been a point every two games or a 0.5 point per game player. And he started off well. He has two points in three games for the Canucks. I think a lot of people that were worried about him, they looked at his contract more than they looked at his, his play. I think he is rejuvenated coming here to Vancouver. So I think he's going to do very well. So I predict that OEL will get 45 points in this season. And I think he's looked fine. I think he's looked fine. He's more aggressive than I thought he'd be. And I think he skates. Uh, his skating's fine. It's not amazing, but he skates fine. And he's very smart. Good offensive instincts. So overall, I have been impressed with Oliver ekman Larson. That dude says, if we're pushing to make a playoff spot, what move do you make at the trade deadline to push the team further? Because a lot of the guys have no trade clauses or no movement clauses, i.e. guys like Sutter, excuse me, Pearson and and Myers, for instance. Those are guys that I think you could try and move. I think if they are indeed pushing for a playoff spot, usually you give up some assets in terms of prospects and picks, and then you bring in a veteran player who, who can help you. So um, I, I'm not I'm not suggesting that they're gonna trade a Hoglander or Pod Coles in. No, but maybe, maybe you have to look at trading uh, some fringe guys and and maybe a, a first or second round draft pick or a, a highly touted prospect because that's the only way that you're going to get value back. You're not going to trade a, a, a an important roster player because 
what you're you're just trading one roster player for another roster player. So usually when it comes to those kind of moves at the trade deadline for playoff bound teams, they're usually giving up picks and prospects as opposed to decent roster players. Rome says with Pacioretty out six weeks and Mark Stone also injured, do you see an opportunity for the Canucks to finish higher than third place in the division? Yeah, it's funny you mentioned third Rome. You've heard me talk about how I think it's going to be Vegas and Edmonton as one, two. But yeah, it, it's early. But um, And there's LA that's been surprising as well. But yeah, I, I think that Vegas is vulnerable right now. They weren't exactly the deepest team already. Some say they kept the wrong goalie and Leonard over, over Flurry, but I still think they're the best team in the division. But yeah, with these two major injuries out, uh, I mean, major two guys out, um, maybe it does open the door a little bit. So I wouldn't be surprised if the Canucks are one of the teams that take advantage. SK, if you could bring any player to Vancouver without worrying about cap hit, et cetera, who would it be? Without a shadow of a doubt, it'd be Connor McDavid. He's the best player in the game by far. He's a genera- generational player like Gretzky, like Lemieux, like Crosby. So I would, um, yeah, then, then you're really deep down the middle. If you go McDavid, Pedersen, Horvat, and then Dickinson as it would become four, you keep Miller on the wing, or you try PD on McDavid's wing, that would be crazy too. But well, yeah, without any doubt, without any hesitation, I'd say Connor McDavid. And lastly, D3 King says, do you believe in Lord Stanley? If you're asking me if I believe in the Canucks winning the Stanley Cup, yeah, I, I do. Um, it's not easy. A lot of things got to go well, and I think it's still going to be two or three years away, like I said in my very first answer. Um, if you're asking me if I believe in the actual person, Lord Stanley, yeah, that's that was, uh, I can't remember if it was the Governor General or something. That's why the cup is named a Stanley's Cup. And if you're asking me if I believe in some sort of fictional Lord Stanley, I'm not sure. Uh, no, I, My answer is no, and I'm not sure what the actual question is. But I'm going to take it at face value. Do you believe in Lord Stanley, i.e. do you believe the Canucks can win a cup? Yeah, I do. I'm optimistic. But a lot of things have to go right. And like I said, it's probably two, three, four years away from now. Well, right, Canucks fans, a smaller group of questions, but that's fine. That suits me just well for today. So I hope that I answered them to your satisfaction. Leave a comment below if you have any reaction to any of my answers. I want to give a shout out to my holo- uh, hero members, Nux fan number 29, Just Incredible, Lucas Gates, and Andrew Chang. And to Hall of Fame members, Jens95, Sim Alexander, Chris Seifert, Adam Broomfield, Shannon Hollingworth, and Carol Bovenlander. Yes, that's a new name in the Hall of Fame list, Carol, who joined the Hall of Fame crew over the weekend. And we have a couple new franchise members, a lot of new all-star members that came on Um, over the weekend as part of the 24-hour live stream. So thanks to all of you, new or old. Thanks to all members of all levels. Thanks for supporting me. And if you want to become a member of the CCC crew, press the join button underneath this or in my videos or in the membership tab on my YouTube channel. Tonight, it's Monday night, so it's Canucks After Dark, 10 p.m., me and Parker. Then Wednesday night, it's, uh, it's my next live stream where I'll draw the winner for the Instagram contest. If you want to be eligible to win a $50 gift certificate to Monkey Nine Brewing, one of my sponsors, then check out my Instagram page. My username is Clayton Emo, my full name, Clayton Emo. And then you'll see a post there about how you can win a $50 gift certificate to Monkey Nine Brewing. In the meantime, subscribe if you like to, like this video if you like to, become a member of the channel if you like to, leave a comment if you'd like to. Canucks don't play tonight, they play tomorrow night. A chance to get back over 500 with a win over the lowly, but performing well. Buffalo Sabres. Stay safe, stay healthy, take care of yourselves and take care of each other. Have a great day. God bless and go Canucks go.